and be what you would intend for us to be. Help us, Father, I need your help. As your servant, my Lord, to Jesus, in my prayer. Amen. Jesus has no intention of allowing any church to wither and die. He says that no church would be fruitful, in fact, would be pleasant to live an abundant life. You can read John chapter 10, verse 10. And Jesus is believing the fruitful church. He resists the church. He gives his life to the church. He changes his body if he's not that he makes it. Before the church is his burden, his strength is free. He maintains it well. He changes his body instead of striving the nurses. It's all Jesus believes in the church. He believes in the fruitful church. That's what Jesus believes in and what the fruit and what the imagination would be to different things. The simple choice that is Jesus believes in, and the is the most important guy as a fruitful source, we still go to well be two different things. And we ask what is a fruitful source? Is it a mother 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 source? Thank you. 
we all take our understanding and follow it into the text. We all know what Jesus says to shape our understanding of truth. The second thing that we see pop up here is abide. Abide in me, Jesus says again and again and again. He's going to develop what that means and what that says, and it's very important. Very necessary to our fruitfulness. And so keep those things in mind as we go in. But look at those two. He says, Every branch in me that bears not fruit can take it away. Jesus is the true vine, his father is a husbandman, he's tending to the vine. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, if there is a branch attached to me, Jesus says, that doesn't produce fruit, the father that he takes it away. He removes it. But you know, on the contrary, every branch that bears fruit, remember, speaking to his disciples, every branch that bears fruit, he and the Father pours it in. He pours it. He puts all the seeds in it, and that's what he can to clean it out to make it more suitable to produce fruit. He pours it in, but I bet it may bring forth. Orphan. That's what Jesus says in verse 7. This is very significant. He says, Now you are clean. Clean is the same word as perfect in verse 2. Same little word, at least. Now you are clean. He said, The Father does branches in me. Those branches attached to the vine that bear the fruit, the Father purges that they may bring forth more fruit. He says, now you are clean. You are purged. You are clean. He says, you are clean. So these disciples, you are clean to the word which I have spoken to you. Go back to John chapter 13. If you kneel down and he picks up their, their grimy feet and he wants them as an example to them, look what he says to Simon Peter. He says, he says, no, never touch my feet. And then, and then he goes to watch out on me. And, and Jesus says in verse 10, he that is washed needs not to not say to wash his feet, but it's clean every way. And we are clean. But not all. Who was the one that was not clean? It was Judas. It was Judas that spent much time around Jesus and his disciples. Who had the form of godliness, but did not have the power of God, who professed to follow Jesus, but who did not possess a sincere faith in who Jesus really was. And Judas did not produce the fruit of belief. He expected the normal expectation of the Messiah, this coming conquering hero that would rescue them from Roman domination, but when that didn't pan out, he's like, you know what, money sounds a lot better than Jesus. And here he was on the inside, came out, and he walked. But what really was going on, when Jesus dismissed him to do what he would do, goes to every branch in me that bears not fruit. He did this to not believe on the Son of God, but who did? He went back all the way to chapter 1 and see the responses again and again and again of, of the 11 and others, how they believed on him. They saw his miracles and they believed on him. And in John chapter 6, it says, As we should be going to leave Jesus and forget this guy, he's the one who's not the one that he's saying things that don't really make sense. But Peter and the disciples said, Do you know what's going to do? You said the words. And he's from alive. You are the one, and then like brought forth that simple fruit of faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus acknowledges in verse 3, he says, Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now don't lose, don't lose this. He said in verse 2, every branch that bears fruit, the father, the husband, then he purges it. He cleanses it, but it may bear forth. More fruit. Jesus looks at the disciples and he said, You are clean to the word which I have spoken unto you. You're clean. In other words, the Father had done what Jesus said he would do in verse 2 in their lives. He had purged them, he had cleansed them. And as he said, two things. One, they're attached to the vine. So I take the right. And two, that God intended for them to bring forth fruit. How would that happen? 
and verse 12, that there is a fact, gentlemen, that he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than you shall do, because I go unto my Father. And then he says this, and whatsoever, you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, that he shall ask anything. And I don't know if you go back to 15. He says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. Ye, pray, ye, together. Ye shall ask what you will. Ye shall pray. Ye shall ask. And ye shall ask. And if you do it in my name, and to the Father, I will do it. I will do it. It shall be done unto you. And in this, verse 8, here is my Father glorified. Jesus has again and again talked about how the Father will be glorified in him. And now he's saying, You abide in me, and my words abide in you. You ask what you will, and it will be done to you. And in this, my Father will be glorified. That is very much true. Now, there may come to as we get there, but I want to go ahead and connect the dots here that Jesus has connected between verses 7 and verse 8. You follow the natural flow of what he has said. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. You say that that sounds like much fruit is, would be the answers to their prayers. Yes. He says, Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. And not only that, but in that so shall ye be my disciples. And this way, people will know you follow me. And this way, people will know you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. And he continues in the says, The Father hath loved me. Can we imagine how much the Father? Love the Son, who so even began to think of what death of love that God had given him for his eternal Son. He says, As the Father hath loved me, man, so have I loved you. Disciples, I loved you just like that. Continue ye in my love. Abide in it. Sounds like abide. Remain in it. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, this is how you can continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, I did whatever the Father told me to do, and I stayed in his love. Love, it limits our liberties, it sets parameters on our lives, sir, but it's all within the context of love. If my son loves me, you will do what I say. And question is love. But often the father questions our love. And Jesus said a very right to question the disciples' love, but he says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So let's back up to the I want you to abide in me. So you can produce fruit. If you keep my commandments, you're abiding in me. You're abiding in my love. If you abide in me, abide in my love, you can produce fruit. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You are just what you will. And so we get into a mess. You can just be like God. You can be a disciple. You can be a disciple. Are you familiar with what I'm saying? And he says, in this letter, these things have I spoken unto you, while it's in my joy. It's the joy. I will make it in you. And I will give it to you. You should be fair. Jesus has spoken these things to them, not to be a dummy down on their life, not to put them in a religious kind of body, but to have a religious kind of life, and to have a dream for it. And to found in him and in him alone. And found in doing this to them, and found in producing the fruit in their lives that they should. But how could they do that? Instead of verse 12, this is my commandment. There it is. That you love one another as I have loved you. As I love you, and as I serve you, you love one another as I have loved you. In fact, it's no greater love. 
fact, he said, but we keep his commandments, believe on him and love one another, and we abide in him. So what is the fruitful church? What is it? And its essence, at its core, what is it? Do we need a plan or some program that we ask you to commit to in such a way that to produce an outward conformity to a set way or do you look the right way or what the outcome is to be sure of the opinion? To talk the right way or to be sure of the right way or to be sure of the right way? Is that what it is? It's a beautiful church that we're found in, in some, some serene time of philosophy. It's a found in some contemporary way that just, that just touches people where they are. Is that what it is? What is a fruitful church is an image essence? And I want to submit to you that it all starts with faith in Jesus. Right? If you have not believed on Jesus Christ, you are not attached to the vine. If you have, you are the divine. And what you're saying is that the thing that I'm going to do this week to realize that I, no matter what the circumstance in my life, I am going to be the best of the divine. The message of the divine to the universe is living in me. Look at the next part, God in me. Why? Because if you believe in Jesus, if I have this entire life, Pick you up and bring you home to heaven. He would have done the right thing, but he didn't do that. He is here. His intent is that you be fruitful. You say, I'm not just going to stress out. I want to be fruitful. I have things in my life I can't get rid of. I can't prove myself. Is he the one that has the proof? Or is the Father? The Jesus words. As Jesus gave the example of service. You might be like the disciples and selfish, but his is not the faith. He buys selfishness. You might be stressed out and troubled, and as, as far as I know, it's just a plant. It isn't very good at producing fruit. A plant, a vine, a tree you can't be stressed, or it's not going to be produced. And you might be stressed out, but his example and his words of comfort. So prune the things in your life. So prune the way and so prune the fear. He said, I'm not going to have a time to demonstrate the fact that he's not going to have a time to demonstrate the fact that he's not going to have a time to demonstrate the fact that he's not going to have a time to demonstrate the fact that he's not going to have a time to demonstrate the fact that he's not going to have a time to demonstrate the fact that he's not going to have a time to demonstrate the his people like you should. Because if you love his people like you should, you will bear the fruit that you should in your life. And gentlemen, I'm just going to be honest with you, this really got me here because the connection between one and one another and then having your prayers answered, Paul said that if we are bitter in our lives and our heart, our prayers will not be answered. They will be hindered. And so I just want to suggest to all of us that if we live one thing in the home, and we are first being a committed Christian in the home, and following Jesus in the home, and loving one another as Jesus loves us in the home, we are blessed hypocrites to come here and pretend that we love everybody. But if we love one another, In every circle of our lives, as Jesus would intend for us to do, we will bring forth fruit. And what is that? You must answer prayer. You want to glorify Jesus? You must be a believing church. You must be a loving church, but we must be a loving church. It's not an option according to Jesus. It's not a cell ministry. It's not something scheduled. There is necessarily scheduled outside of the normal time. It should be everything we are all about, praying together, because, if, listen, if we are planning to bring forth fruit, and we are loving people, and this church is a loving church, and that's what we are, but we don't take the next step and, and come together, and as we are come together and pray, we will not bring forth the fruit that he intended. We will not sing prayers answered together. But when we do this, we are believing in Jesus Christ. We are loving one another. We are praying our 
prayers are answered. You know what? We are a joyful church. And when Jesus told his disciples, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And when he told them again in Acts chapter 28, he said, go into all the world and teach all nations. What does that mean? Make disciples. In other words, reproduce yourself. Real fruit can come from real fruit. If you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are a believer, but you do not, you are not loving others in this assembly as you should. If you are loving, but you are not praying together and we are not praying together. If we're praying, we will not have joy. If all these things are in place, Jesus said in 15, and he said, So shall ye be my disciples. Why would we want to reproduce what we have now? But the wonderful thing, you know, the man who read this verse, he said, You are disciples. And I felt the love of his people. And I have seen the prayers and heard the prayers of this people. I have seen the joy of this people, and I know this is a fruitful church. And so I just want to ask you, church, as Jesus did, will you abide in him? Will you abide in him? I want to be a fruitful church. I want to be a joyful church. I want to be sent to make disciples. It's up to you. Will you abide in him? Let's sing together and we will pray. As a piano um, player comes and really with the comes, I sing a hymn and close him. We'll pray. And it's just upon my heart that we will be a fruitful church. And honestly, I'm not, I don't want to initiate a bunch of programs. And things that are going to be I, I simply want to follow Jesus. I simply want to love you. I simply want to pray with you and see the joy of God down in this place. And so, as they come and as he sings, you know, I'm going to come and kneel here at the altar and pray just that way that I would love them, my family, and I love better my church. And that God would help us be a fruitful church. And if you'd like to join me, you're welcome to. I'm, I'm not saying you have to, but I'm going to pray that way. If you'd like to join me, you can do it. God bless you. Thank you for your attention to the Word of God today. And I just pray, and pray with me, that we would be who God wants us to be, and we would continue in Him, that we would love one another. It's so simple. Thank you, it's so simple. When I hear it, it's a pleasure, it's a great shot of you. But God is at work in your life, and He loves you very much. Let that love flow through you, and let His grace abound. 
my joy and my, my soul. For you know what? We just have a joyful life together. And that's what we want. That's what we want. God bless you. Hope to see you back tonight. And so we're going to we take a look at Hebrews 11 out of faith and does hard things. Sometimes we've got to do hard things in our life. And, and God bless you. We have faith that help us with that. And enjoy your afternoon. Enjoy time with family. And in the, the cooler fall weather. Get to a pumpkin patch or something. We got to one yesterday. It was fun. The kids enjoyed it. But Jack was staying with me. Kathy, all morning. He wanted to go to the pumpkin patch in this Kathy. So, anyways, let's go as a word of prayer. And uh, you can use some good of this.